The Disney stock drop in the past days has been absolutely atrocious and terrible, not only for stockholders, but also for Disney's power to control the narrative. Folks, we're here to tell you the amount of money lost by Disney recently is so big, so tremendously huge, that the amount they lost is equal to one of their major competitors' total entire company value. We'll tell you who it is, and we'll tell you how big the money loss is right now. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the channel. That is not anything about financials, because we don't give financial advice, but we do tell Hollywood how to make money again. And by the way, it's by leaving the woke behind and returning to the sensible center, the mainstream Main Street USA that they used to know and love so well. Once upon a time, they loved money. Now they just love woke, woke, woke. And well, you know what that leads to, right? Broke, broke, and yes, you got it, broke again. Well, folks, today we're gonna to talk about just how much money Disney lost over the last week, and it is impressive, it is staggering. And if you're an investor out there, you probably are not tremendously happy with that unless you like watching your wallet diminished. All right, folks, let's bring on the fantastic panel. And as we do, click that like button right now. Disney stock limps to worst day since 2022 despite surprise Disney Plus profit, despite Derek Saul. And you can almost hear the incredulity in the uh, headline here. Uh, the, the, the people out there can't believe it. The narrative has been dismissed. What is going on? Disney shares I'm tanked. so glad he doesn't have those distractions anymore. This is going great. <laughs> oh, Nolan, well said, yes. <laughs> They can focus now. They can focus now. The distraction is out of the way. Disney shares. You know what? I've got to do it, folks. It, that was actually in this article from Motley Fool when yesterday it was predicted $140 <laughs> today. Oh, my, oh, my. Anyway, Disney shares tanked Tuesday. That's today. After delivering a fairly strong earnings report. Now, look at, look at this. Look at the... This sentence makes no sense. Let's read it again. Disney shares tanked Tuesday after delivering a fairly strong earnings report. Those, those can't exist together. So I'm sorry, author, you're not. Anyway, let's keep going. As the entertainment giant walks the tightrope between growth and right-sizing, I, gosh, I had heard the term right-sizing. It's been going on now for a little while. Can we please get rid of right-sizing? Right-sizing means downsizing, but in a friendly way. Good grief. It's streaming business. Anyway. Early Tuesday, Disney reported $22.08 billion in revenue and $1.21 earnings per share in the three-month period ending March 30th. Disney also upped its guidance for full-year profit growth. Perhaps not interestingly, Disney reported a $47 million quarterly operating profit for its Hulu and Disney Plus streaming services. We've talked about that. Still, here's the news they can't understand. Disney shares fell 10% to $105 by late morning, pacing towards their worst day since November 9th, 2022, sending the stock to its lowest ticker since early February, a.k.a. pre-proxy. Wait, 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 wait. The headline was limping. Now they're saying pacing. Oh, so yes, so yes. Me, so riddle me this. In a stock that in the last 65 days has an average of 11 million shares sold and ex exchanged, we're at 42 and a quarter million right now, and there's still time left. Is that limping or pacing? That's plummeting! Plummeting. Exactly, Lou. They need to get their alliteration more on point. Tuesday's sell-off looks goofy at first glance. Well, there's, okay, yeah. you, got a, yeah. you got a little, <laughs> oh, shucks. Oh, yep. But it reflects the arduous task facing CEO Bob Iger and company return the Hollywood behemoth to its glory days. Guys and gals, how long? How long does Bob Iger have an arduous task? He's always got an arduous task. Every time we have heard about Bob Iger for the past two years, <laughs> He's tried to fix this company that he only let go of for six months. He's the savior who broke it. For one, Disney's share price remains up 16% year to date, outpacing the S&P 500's 10% gain. And of course, as we've said, folks, that is very misleading, although perhaps not intentionally so. It's misleading because why did the stock go up? Well, because of the proxy battle with Nelson Peltz. Now that he's gone, it's dropping. And now we know that Disney may have lifted the stock on their own during that proxy battle by buying a billion dollars through the company. The largely inline headline numbers and outlook underscore the years-long issues Disney has, as the $4.70 earnings per share got by Disney is far lower than its full-year profits 
every single year from 2015 to 2019. And analysts don't expect Disney. Listen to this line, folks. This might be where the collapse is happening. Analysts don't expect Disney to recapture its 2018 record profit until 2028. If only someone had told Motley Fool and whoever that analyst is. Continuing on, the big number, $20 billion, that's how much market value Disney lost Tuesday. Roughly equivalent to the total market capitalization of entertainment rival and HBO parent Warner Brothers Discovery. Let me say this again for those of you out there who don't understand. Just what a crash you have witnessed today with the Disney stock. And this is why, by the way, you're so happy you're here in the final hour of an extended pro show. Because otherwise you would not hear this. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today, Disney wiped out an amount of money equivalent to all of Warner Brothers Discovery. I can't keep going. We got to pause on this and talk about it. Panel, it's like Warner Brothers Discovery was wiped off the map, except it's Disney money. What do you make of this kind of loss? What well. kind of chaos is going behind the scenes? Because, you know, if things are extremely dire, like dire, dire, you usually don't hear about this stuff with company until there's like a big announcement of something's getting cut, something's closing, something like that. I wonder what the amount of anxiety is within the walls of the company. Are they just this blissfully ignorant or is there a panic mode going on right now? Blue? Panic. Well, well I would I'm, say panic. <laughs> you'll never see it publicly. Uh, no, they're running ahead, around Lou. the C-suite, you know, right now with it their hair on wonder. fire. It makes you wonder if that IT boss who moved to the gambling company didn't smell the vapors coming and said, I better get out while the getting is good. Good point. And I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the last, the most recent headlines on Market Watch. Are you ready for two funny headlines? Ready, Lou. Go ahead. This was at 2 o'clock by Emily Berry. Disney couldn't quite meet last quarter's, quote, high bar. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you call losing a tenth of your entire company's okay, value. Next, you know. next one. And they don't understand why? Headline by Tommy Kilgore. Disney is relying on sequels and reboots for streaming success. But how's that been working so far? I, I mean, you know, as they used to say on a TV show, I had nothing to do with. The, <laughs> truth, the truth is out there. I'm starting to think the best way to find out who you are is what shows you didn't work on, Lou. Mm, <laughs> happily, there are more shows than me. Um, That's right. <laughs> well, that All was right, when well, we were doing uh, uh, the show with Vash the other day. Somebody had a question about the real Lou, and they asked me, had I ever worked for him? And I had to think about it. And technically, I did shows at Universal when he was the boss, but the closest I ever got was seeing his face across the crowded commissary, you know, so. Yes, yes. And by the way, folks, one of the funniest things that we have seen in a long, long time is that, so the pro show has its own IMDb page, right? So, you know, it's tracked as a, as a, a podcast. And so part of its tracking is it tracks who are the guests on the show and how many appearances they have and which episodes they appear in. And uh, it turns out that they have been so tricked by... Uh, Lou Wasserman's ghost. Somehow they think that that Lou is the real Lou. And so, if you go they, look at uh, Lou Wasserman, his uh, his IMDb uh, page and, and what he's been involved in, he has somehow come back to life and is now uh, part of the pro show. Because the they, actual... they post the date of his death, and then they post my appearances here, and I'm going. I'm literally <laughs> a ghost. They always post him as archive footage, so it's nice talking to the archive footage. Well, they're yeah. only they're only talking about things he physically appeared in that got to the air or got to the screen, so that's why. So let's take a look at the uh, the rest of this article. It's really important. Iger's remarks pose a fairly bold statement considering the wide losses felt by every streamer other than Netflix. Folks, I'm here to tell you that's also not true. YouTube is and should be counted as a streamer, and YouTube's doing just fine. Netflix is doing just fine. Amazon Prime Video doing just fine. To be doing way better than fine. So this, this idea that all the other streamers are struggling is not true. Analysts project Disney streaming unit to turn its first ever full year profit next year. Now that is new to me. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard that, that that's expected. I heard it's 
linear growth right now. So I, or not linear growth. So who knows? Maybe that maybe that is what they expect. Disney stock posted its best day in four years following its fr- February earnings report. Last quarter also featured a victory over billionaire activist investor Nelson Peltz. Well, how much of a victory is that if it costs you 10% of your total value? In line with his quest for efficiency, Iger said Tuesday he expects Disney to slow production for its highly popular Marvel superhero content to probably about two television series and two to the maximum three movies per year. Uh, it seems like it's headed towards Star Wars status to me. But guys, gals, it doesn't seem to me that if your announcement is we're going to slow down what we're doing because it's not successful, I don't think that's a great uh, way to go towards convincing people your company is just fine. And it seems like it seems like that, uh, well, investors are agreeing. Still, this late in the day, Disney down more than 10%. All right, folks, we have come to the end, but thank you for being part of the journey. Yes, we have been right on the money when it comes to how much money Disney was going to lose. And we're going to continue, folks, to tell you the things you need to know to stay ahead of that culture curve when it comes to all things entertainment. Stay glued right here to the Pro Channel. Don't forget the Pro Show is live Tuesdays at noon Eastern, and that Park Place Live is live on Thursdays, noon Eastern. But that's not all. Midnight's Edge, the show that you love, the show that you got to see with Tom Connors and with Andre. Don't miss that either. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon. That means you have somewhere to be every single noon day of the week, Eastern Time. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing. And, as always, keep having fun!